Hello there, kitties. I'm Karine, the vacuum chip witch. Long time no see. I don't know when I posted my last video, but I've got something nice for you. I've got something nice. The Grass Instruments uh, SIU-4B Stimulus Insulation Unit. It's... Uh, kind of a uh, little shout out video to my dear friend Blanche <laughs> because uh, she is uh, doing a teardown video of um, another grass instruments uh, medical device uh, an amplifier and I happen to have um, a device from uh, that company in my lab too. I got it from the medical university in Gdańsk. And it's so nice, it's so touchy-feely. And it's very interesting inside. I, uh, I already reverse engineered this thing. So, let's go over to the bench. Here we are at the bench. Let's zoom on in. The front panel has uh, two pretty cryptic uh, switches, mono and bi, two plus and one plus. We'll find out uh, what those switches do. There's also a range switch and a pair of uh, terminals. <coughs> when I first uh, reverse engineered this thing uh, I thought uh, those would be the input terminals but it uh, turned out uh, to be completely another direction. Those, uh, those are output not input terminals. In order to take this apart, I need to unscrew the four screws on the front panel. Those screws are very nice with a flattened uh, lenticular head. So taking this thing apart I think that uh, this device has been uh, made in the 1960s. Oh, by the way, look at the front panel material. It's uh, it's something like die bond. Uh, it's not uh, made of metal. It's uh, it's made of uh, sandwich type uh, plastic. Moving out. Uh, the inside it, it reveals the the switches and some components and there's a vacuum tube inside <laughs> and a coreless uh, high frequency transformer with uh, a uh, trimmer capacitor a uh, Jones uh, type connector, Jones, not Dave Jones, but <laughs> then the vacuum chip base, a, uh, a ceramic disc cap, uh, Cornell de Billier, uh, silver mica caps, uh, things of beauty, joy forever, also the inductors, uh, free three inductors here for four diodes some resistors one of those switches another one of those touchy feely switches and then the wafer switch uh, the rotary one uh, with some resistors and capacitors uh, soldered to it and uh, 
a Sprague, don't be vague, go Sprague, um, two microfarad, uh, 200 volts DC, probably paper and oil capacitor, looking very nice. And uh, if you noticed, uh, there are no traces on the board. It's made of uh, very thick. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Let's see how thick it gets. Come on, lighting. It's. It's two and a half millimeter uh, FR4 single layer with those lovely nice uh, turrets uh, that you can sometimes see uh, in guitar amplifier turret boards. All made with uh, with the glass epoxy material. Used uh, for making the printed circuit boards. There's an uh, inspection stamp uh, 054, another marking here, and uh, carbon composition resistors. Those resistors here are also uh, the, the carbon comp type. There's another resistor here. And I'm absolutely sure this was an uh, aftermarket uh, modification um, of this device. It's in line with um, the terminal number two. And uh, I already took time to reverse engineer this device. Um, those uh, trimmer caps uh, they are marked uh, ARCO 463, same as this one, and the vacuum tube type it's uh, 6AG7, it's a pentoad. <coughs> so let's take a look how, how this device uh, actually works. Uh, let's bring out the schematic. Looking at the schematic uh, coming in uh, on the Jones connector, one of the one of um, the lines uh, powers the vacuum tubes plate, and uh, my strong suspicion uh, is that uh, it's not just DC. It can uh, also let um, the high amplitude uh, AC signals uh, that would uh, act uh, then the pentode would uh, act uh, both as a uh, cathode follower not uh, not exactly as a um, cathode follower but uh, it would be a um, oscillator but uh, if we apply the um, changing uh, voltage to, to the plate it would um, be an uh, amplitude modulated uh, signal coming into the coreless uh, transformer and then we've got a uh, demodulation uh, circuit with, uh, with the diode and the filter so uh, this uh, uses a uh, high frequency AC as a means to to galvanically separate the potentially slowly changing uh, AC on the input like uh, like some uh, rectangular pulse uh, waveform. And uh, we've got uh, this uh, filter, it's, uh, it's all with uh, 
LC tank circuits uh, tuned down to the frequency that um, that the modulator works with and uh, the 27k resistor as I loud then we've got this mono or buy switch it's uh, it's just a uh, straight through bypass in the mono position but if we switch it to the buy position it uh, drops a uh, 2 microfarad uh, 100k uh, high pass filter with uh, with the cutoff frequency of around uh, 0.8 hertz into the circuit and then uh, we are going over to the top of uh, this uh, turret board I, uh, I drew this switch uh, the other way around uh, the input side uh, should be the fixed contacts and uh, the output side should be the, the switching uh, contacts, but um, functionally it's the same. And uh, the output of this switch comes into the wafer switch, it uses four sections, uh, five positions. Then the first position is uh, 0 0.001, 0 0.1, 0 1, 0 1, 1 and 10. Then the last position basically cuts out uh, any attenuation uh, on this switch. And uh, the remaining positions, uh, it's, uh, it's just a uh, balanced uh, attenuator. A, uh, a voltage divider formed by the 1k resistors uh, and a number of uh, other resistors with uh, choosing the, um, the step on the resistor ladder and um, there are also capacitors uh, parallel to the resistors forming the additional low pass filters so the, the first step would be 1k and 820 ohms though there's a parallel resistance of all this chain this whole network has to be counted in, so it's not just uh, 820 ohms. Um, it's uh, it's way more than that. Uh, though uh, it will be 5k4 plus so whatever is behind this. Uh, so it's uh, not uh, all that uh, much of a change. Anyway, uh, going further down. Uh, those, uh, those steps on the ladder reduces the output voltage uh, on the terminals and uh, this switch uh, it's basically a um, polarity reversal switch uh, the marking means that uh, 2 plus um, is um, the higher potential will be at uh, terminal 2 one plus uh, means that the higher potential will be at terminal one. Basically, the phase inversion. And the device is uh, it's uh, in a aluminum. Uh, let me check if it is aluminum. Yeah, it's made of aluminum. Hammer painted uh, aluminum uh, sheet metal enclosure put together with uh, with a bunch of screws. What's there not to love in this unit? It's an excellent example of um, electrical engineering of how of how uh, things were built uh, in the 1960s. Uh, 
Especially uh, given that uh, this is a medical grade device. Um, it was used uh, to provide uh, additional um, insulation um, between uh, the potential patient uh, receiving stimulation and, um, and the stimulation signal generator. I've got one in my lab uh, from a different company made in Great Britain and I will make a video about it, but, uh, but that's uh, another story. And uh, compare it to the Unistam G9 um, I made a video um, about recently that uh, Polish um, dentist apparatus that uh, was um, built uh, so poorly I wouldn't consider it safe enough for um, a medical grade device. This is a completely different story than one of the one of the few American built um, devices that I have in my lab. So going back That's uh, this just one uh, little example. It's uh, it's so teeny tiny, but um, it's a joy forever to um, to look at, to to show to other people, to reverse engineer and uh, and analyze. I love this uh, kind of stuff. Um, working on uh, professional electronics. By the way, uh, I've got a lot of. Uh, harmonic distortion in my voice and I'm, I'm still <coughs> kind of kind of sick I, uh, I uh, that might have uh, that might be the XBB 1.5 the, the Kraken or it might be the regular cold I'm not sure but um, I'm getting over it I will carry on I will get well I will make some more videos very soon and for now stay determined and carry on.